Hello, friends, and welcome to Activate and Thrive and to our weekly Thriving Thursday chat, where we chat with different beautiful health and wellness-minded people. Um, we hold these chats every Thursday at noon Eastern US time uh, at our Facebook page, Activate and Thrive as a live. And then we also post them on Instagram and YouTube. So whether you're watching live right now or later on Facebook, or on YouTube or Instagram later. Welcome, we're so glad to have you here. Please look for these chats each week on Thursdays at noon. My name's Don Krishnaswamy. And I'm Mia. And this week we welcome professional trumpet player, Ryan O'Connell, who will chat with us about breaking through the limitations that can hold us back from being everything that we want to be. Ryan is currently a master's student at the New England Conservatory, actually in his final semester. He's a founder of Own Your Voice, a business whose core mission is to help people live in greater alignment with their highest selves. Through Ryan's daily life, his mission is to practice help, love, give. To use his experiences and the lessons he's learned to empower others to discover what abundant living is truly about. Many of his beliefs and teachings have come from Eckhart Tolle, um, Sharon Salzberg, Tony Robbins, and others. And during his free time, Ryan can be found playing trumpet, exercising, and spending time with friends. So welcome, Ryan. We're so happy to have you with us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's, I'm super, super grateful that we can share this together. So thank you. Absolutely. So Ryan, you and I first connected uh, as a result of uh, Tony Robbins' Unleash the Power Within, these powerful seminars that he runs. Um, and on their Facebook page, someone asked if there were any musicians attending. And that's how you and I uh, connected. And, and we turned out that we realized, hey, we're both Boston area musicians. So that was yeah. kind of cool. But uh, if you could tell us just uh, what led you or prompted you to participate in this Tony Robbins seminar, because we, I guess, as both being musicians, we, we tend to think of ourselves very focused on our, our art and craft and honing that we don't tend to think outside the box as much. And certainly a young man like yourself would be just that much more focused on their art and craft and not looking to explode through mental barriers like Tony Robbins requires one to. So just tell us what led and prompted you to participate in that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, personal growth has been something I've been passionate and, and dedicated on for, for the past five years now. And, you know, as, as, as you know, Tony says, um, you know, either pain will push us or the vision for something greater. And before that seminar, I was experiencing both. <laughs> in totally different areas where, you know, as a musician at a, you know, a conservatory and going to music school and undergrad and playing music for, for 10 years, 11 years, after taking a semester off, I was left with the pain of who am I, you know, you know, what is my identity? But I was also left with this vision that there's something more to music for me. You know, something more to discover, something more to contribute towards, something, something more that I, I am meant to be a part of. And it was this opportunity that just kind of of the seminar uh, where I was like, I, I have to do this. You know, this is this is a must for me. Um, and so it really, like I said, was that vision of something greater that I didn't know at the time. And I, you know, we're still discovering, but also the pain of what was holding me back and the pain of such uncertainty. So. Oh, I can totally relate to that. We've both done the Unleash the Power Within experience twice. twice and, actually, yeah. um, you know, it really does help you tap into whatever is holding you back and breaking through those limitations. So um, love that you guys met that way. Yeah. Um, so being a, a singer and being a voice teacher, in addition to us being business owners in the, in the health and wellness space, I'm interested in learning about this business of yours, um, Own Your Voice. Can you share a little bit more about that with us? 
Absolutely. You know, it's during Unleash the Power Within and a couple months afterwards, I was faced with such uncertainty. Um, and when I say every area of my life, literally every area, you know, what is the impact I want to have? What is my identity? Who am I? What am I supposed to do? You know, what brings me joy? Literally everything. And so in the midst of it, and kind of exploring different ideas, you know, I looked into Fulbright, Peace Corps, um, nonprofits. I actually, it's funny, I have a list that I made of about 25 areas <laughs> to explore outside of music. And so the more I just kind of dug into the uncertainty, the more, um, the more joy I, I found and what was really in alignment. So Own Your Voice um, was an idea that came to me. Uh, and a trip I took to St. Louis about two months ago, funny enough, from another Tony Robbins event. <laughs> you know, um, it started out as this idea of, wait a second, we all go through struggles and we can use what we've learned and experienced to help somebody else. That was kind of like the first aha. And I had this thought, I was like, well, what if I just put things on a shirt? <laughs> what if I put things that inspire me on a shirt? And so I started doing that, like practice gratitude, uh, choose compassion. And as I wore these, I thought, wow, I am wearing my heart on my chest. I am owning my voice. And it was scary. It was very scary and uncomfortable, but I was like, I'm really owning my voice. If I can help other people, what if I can help other people own their voice? And the more I dug into this idea of own your voice, the more I was like, I really believe there's something here. So own your voice is all about, we're dedicated to basically ending suffering by awakening people to their abundant highest selves and empowering them to live it every single day. And this is done through right now, one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching sessions, um, which, you know, down the line um, is gonna expand tenfold to a bunch of different areas. So stay tuned, but that's that's own your voice and a gist in, in, just, in just a couple words. So. Okay, you know, something you said, can you tell us why it was scary to wear those words on your chest? That's an interesting. Thought. Yeah, I think yeah. I can imagine, but I want you to tell us what you think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you, you know, people say you, you don't really get a taste for something else until you experience that something else, you know, when, when the stuff you're experiencing feels out of alignment as a result. And so it's funny, when I was in preschool, all the way back to preschool, my teacher described me as a people pleaser. My parents growing up described me as a really quiet, shy kid. Going back to middle school, going back to elementary school, going back to high school, I was always so afraid to speak my mind, mm. to share what I believe, to, to believe in something and stand for something. I was so afraid of that because I, w I thought that doing so would basically make other people not like me. You know, I was so afraid of what somebody else thought. You know, I remember in high school, for example, I was a drum major for our marching band. We'd wear our tour shirts before a competition, and I was so afraid to even wear that shirt because of what people, I was like, if I do, people will judge me. So Own Your Voice is really an extension of, of my own growth through literally owning my voice and really self-empowerment through believing and standing for something. And so that's where that fear came from of, of those simple messages on the shirt. Wow. We you know, are all, I'm, sorry. <laughs> just get, I'm getting feedback from someone saying that it sounds like you're a little far from your mic. I don't know if, is there anything you can do about that or? Yeah, is this better? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yep, that's better. <laughs> cool. That's actually a little loud. I, I no, might that, be no, keep it, keep it. That's good for our listeners. So okay. awesome. Great. Um, so I have a question for you. Um, yeah. are, were you saying something? No, go ahead. <laughs> it was just about the mic. Okay. No, it's just so important because whatever we do in life, in owning our voice, it's that mindset that if something is going to happen, if something is going to be, it's really up to us. There's so much that stands in the way between this ear and this ear, you know, and it's our own limiting thoughts. Nobody else is, is limiting us. It's what we are allowing to come in there to be a limitation. And um, many musicians at your stage in their careers are all about honing their craft, you know? They're all about refining their art so that they can go out there and really land the jobs, you know? But they're not necessarily, well, maybe this is 
not the right thing to say, but maybe they're not as outward looking. They're more focused on kind of true. <laughs> yeah, they're more focused on their career, and you know. So I'm getting ready to finish school here. So what does that mean when I'm done? You know, I'm in this protected cocoon right now, but when I'm out of this environment, then how am I going to make things happen? And you're thinking very outwardly. So um, why is it so important to you to have that bigger view? Yeah, you know, that's, that's a great question. And I think it's so important to me because, you know, I, I, here and there, I've gotten little tastes of what I can contribute and, and the impact that, that I can have. And I'm not saying this from a place of, of ego by any means, but, but the idea that, that once, and I think Tony talks about it or, or somebody else, once you can taste that there's something beyond where you're at, it's like, that's it. You know, it's, it's like, there's really no going back in that way. And I have been really fortunate enough to be able to um, taste a little bit of that, especially when it comes to teaching and helping other people is something that it's funny. I was actually talking to my friend the other day that I come from a family of just teachers in different areas, you know, my mom, my dad, my aunt, my, my dad's cousin, all these people, my cut, my cousin, all the, my sister. <laughs> and so, te so teaching and helping other people in that way is something that just brings me such joy. And I think the other side of it is, having a taste of what doesn't feel right is the other thing. So it's like, okay, so here's, here's what feels right. Here's what doesn't feel right. Which direction am I going to choose? Hopefully the one that feels right. <laughs> so that's where that comes from. Oh, fabulous. Um, yeah. So <laughs> let's cut to the chase here. You jumped out of a plane recently. <laughs> <laughs> I did. That's, that's huge. Not everybody's willing to do that. Can you talk to us about um, uh, what led to that, to doing that, what the experience was like and what it taught you? Yeah, you know, it's it's an idea that my my friend had when we were just going on a, just a super chill vacation out in, out in San Diego. And I was like, yeah, sure, like whatever. Like I was super downplaying it. And, you know, the day came and I was like, yeah, we're just jumping out of a, a plane, whatever. <laughs> Um, and again, and it was, he clicked me in with the straps and then stuff got just real and I could <laughs> like zero to a hundred real. And my heart was just going and beating and, um, the plane ride up was fine. Super, super relaxing actually. And then he, st once he strapped me into him, uh, the instructor, he started sliding forward on the bench and I was just, there was no time to be afraid because I was in such shock and fight or flight and like, what is happening? And then finally the jump and it was terrifying for the first two seconds, three seconds. And then it was just the most just freeing, liberating, empowering thing I've ever experienced, you know, to be able to go from feeling, oh shoot, to, to free falling and flying to then finally pulling the parachute and just soaring and it was honestly one of the most emotional experiences i've ever had because as we were flying with the parachute especially a thought came into my head that you know the ability to overcome is within me the ability to overcome is within me and that just kept going through my head and i think you know what it was was literally being on top of the world <laughs> literally soaring over the world and landing i just i just it i can't and words can't even describe it you know and my friend who i was with donald we were in the car afterwards we just like broke down crying because he had another similar experience and it's something that uh, even talking about it, i can actually I can feel right now like the ability to overcome is within me and up to that point i had a really rough june you know things felt really out of alignment and a lot of ways, sleep, eating, everything. And so I decided, I committed myself. I said that day, that morning, I am jumping into new beginnings. That was, that was what I said before the, before jumping, actually going up in the plane, I am jumping into wow. new beginnings. This is more than just jumping out of an airplane. This is committing to excellence, committing to raising a standard and jumping into new beginnings. And I think with that came the idea, the thought that the ability to overcome is within me. And that is something that just, once you, it's one thing to understand, to, to hear it. It's one thing to recognize it, but to feel it, to really feel it 
over your body is just un unbelievable. And so that's what that experience wow. was for me. Yeah. Well, oh, you're so inspiring. <laughs> I mean, I have <laughs> never you. done it. I've never done it, and the thought of it terrifies me. So maybe that's why I should do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I happen to know that you had a more colorful metaphor than "oh shoot" when you, when you jumped out. Uh, we know that, and if, if ever it was appropriate, that would have been the moment. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and you're saying that it was only two or three seconds that you were afraid. That's not actually very long. So you, it seems like you very quickly got control of the situation once you jumped out. Yeah, totally. You know, it, it's the instructor tells you to hold on to the straps until he taps you on the shoulder. And that that fear for me was the stomach dropping like from a roller coaster. But after my body got used to that, and you tapped me on the shoulder. And you know, you could let loose, it just felt like you were just flying, like just I words don't do it justice. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure. Well, there's actually there's a beautiful video of you that you posted of the dive and yeah. we, we might just go ahead and, and add that to this feed if you sure. if you're okay with that then people can see this incredible breakthrough that you experienced it's just they'll, they'll know what i said by the video yeah <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. exactly. yeah, yeah. It's, it's beautiful so you know go, going forward what what did that experience do for you going forward and what, what has it taught you going forward like imagine yeah. that you hadn't done that and now you have, what, what's the difference in your life? Yeah, to me, the number one thing was, you know, I, I talked a little bit about having a June that was, that was, you know, out of alignment with my sleeping, my eating, my socializing, everything just felt out of alignment. So that jump for me was, I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna acknowledge where I'm at and I'm gonna set a new standard for myself. You know, Tony Robbins talks about being a, being a thermostat, right? And, and that jump for me, was my body saying it's too cold we're going to raise the heat you know it's it's taking things up another standard another notch to be able to like deliver for other people because i say all the time i'm like well i can't give to somebody else what i don't give to myself and i recognize that for june that i was kind of not really walking the walk so much i was saying these things and yeah this is what i believe but was i really living it and that jump to me was, we're going to stop here. We need to change our course. We must do this to serve other people at the highest level. This is unacceptable. We're going to do it. So, so to me, that jump was about setting a new standard and living that new standard on a daily basis. Wow. You know how Tony always says, make your move, make your yeah. move. <laughs> yeah. I think you made your move. <laughs> move, move. Yeah. <laughs> well, honestly, although I already knew you a little bit from having connected with you, before, I think knowing about that skydive was a big thing that pushed us to want to have you on our Thriving Thursday because it was just so impressive to see you so concretely breaking through barriers. So that's, that's really amazing. Um, uh, what advice do you have for people who may not be necessarily thinking, you know, perhaps in the expansive ways that you are? Um, to help guide them along, you know, what might be stopping them because we all need to grow, right? <laughs> we, we need to stretch ourselves to grow and do things that are out of our comfort zone because we all tend to be those creatures of, of habit, you know, and to really break through. Like I was just on a training with Grant Cardone the other day and um, the 10XR game, he's talking about beat the sun up every morning. You know, like get up before the sun rises hmm. and how that can give you a different perspective. So what okay. advice do you have for people that may not quite be there yet, but everybody wants to grow? And, yeah. sh and should everybody think more expansively or is it okay to just kind of be in our little shells? I mean, the answer seems obvious, but talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it is it is not just important to think expansively, but I think it is it is of the utmost essence. It, it's what living is to me. You know, I think it's to me, it's a matter <laughs> to me, actually, this came out from UPW. It's a matter of life or death for me. You know, if I'm not thinking in this way, if I am not acting to serve other people the highest level in these ways, I don't see myself living. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that to be morbid, but I'm saying that because this is how important it is to me. And so one piece of 
I don't want to say wisdom or advice that I can offer is that I think it starts with recognizing that, you know, each person, each person listening and watching has a really beautiful gift. That's the essence of own your voice is that we believe that every single person has a really special voice. We believe that every person is capable of unconditional love. We believe that every person is deserving of it. And the essence of, of what I can say now is recognizing that you have a gift that can and must better the world that uh, that every single person if they tap into that enough is capable of that and i think when people begin to realize that which is what we do with own your voice when people begin to recognize that and see that it just it, it pulls them it pulls them forward and you can't but help thinking expansively and, and helping others and so expansive thinking what, is important so yeah what, what is so one agree. what is one thing that somebody could do it's like they maybe they hear this and say you know i want to that sounds awesome i want to think more expansively about my potential to bless i just don't know what to do i'm stuck in this you know the demand to make money i've got this family and all these demands what's what's one simple thing that someone might be able to do to latch on to something to get started with lifting up their perspective and their consciousness yeah, so I call it PBOP, P-B-O-P, and um, it's such a simple little thing. This is this is so unbelievably simple, but I believe everything starts with having an awareness over where we're at and where we want to be. So PBOP is pause, breathe, observe, proceed, and you can even make a game. Yeah, and you can even make a game out of it. You know what I started doing about a week ago was okay. Every time I walk through a doorway. I don't know why doorway, but every time I walk through a doorway, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this and say one thing I'm grateful for. And it takes 10 seconds, <laughs> literally 10 seconds. Or it could be, I did it a couple of years ago. Every time I am in front of a mirror, I'm going to peebop, peebop and say one thing I'm grateful for. And literally it takes 10 seconds. And I think it's people get caught up in, and I must take these do these big grandiose things to make change happen. And I, it's so overwhelming because that is me. That is, that is 100% me. But I think what often gets overlooked is the, the little things, what I call the big little things. Mm. And PBOP is a great way to just bring more awareness into our lives that you can have fun with and make a game of even. So I would say PBOP, that's pause, breathe, observe, proceed really not just do it to oh check it off but to really yeah. really do it so yeah. Still this. yeah and it's uh, the yeah. difference you'll feel the difference if you try it trust me <laughs> oh yeah it's important to take that time and i think that to doing it first thing in the morning you can do it all day long but i think if you can take the time to do it first thing in the morning before you start your day you know then you're really yeah. prepping your day in the best possible way Absolutely. And the other thing I have to say about that is, is if you're somebody who has a difficult time uh, starting habits and starting new, new behaviors and rituals, like just do it once a day, one time a day. And then after a week, do it twice a day. You know what I mean? You can even set a reminder in your phone or I use this app. Um, I use this app called done and you just put a habit in. And every time you do it, you, you click it and it turns this colorful, <laughs> colorful color <laughs> uh, that says you did it and it's and it's it's fun and it feels really good too so just start really really small is what i would have to say about that that's great i love peebop yeah. that's peebop. fabulous <laughs> you know as we uh, come to a close here just one more aspect of all of this is that um what do you think about the impact on our health of thinking more outside the box thinking the way you you were thinking surely this must have an impact on our actual health absolutely absolutely and you know what i found because i can only speak from my own experience but i think it is it is like i said it's life and death in my opinion where mm -hmm. i have found when i am in a rut or if i'm feeling anxious or or depressed or anything like that um i notice i have a tendency to think inwards and psh, the blinders on shell up don't look like don't look at me sort of a thing and I notice that makes me a lot more tired. I notice it makes me a lot more angry, frustrated. I want to see people less. 
Mm-hmm. And so going back to some own your voice jargon is all about living in alignment is all about practicing these things so we can think outwards and look outwards and not only think and look, but actually be present outwards. And I find, I found with me personally, that's given me a lot more energy. I found that it makes me want to eat more. It, I've, I've found that it gets me better sleep. It, more, more, <laughs> most importantly, I would say is it gets me up in the morning because I'm not a morning person, but it, it gets me up excited. So definitely, definitely a huge impact on your health. Yeah. Well, that's fabulous. Well, Ryan, uh, we, we never like to bring these uh, chats to a close because they're always so um, incredible and yours is no different than any of the others. So thank you for just the extraordinary things you've shared today. Um, so we at Activate and Thrive uh, are committed to, to uh, health, both on, on the mental and spiritual level and also the physical level, kind of, um, kind of uh, establishing a fundamental a basis on a cellular level for our health that that just expands into all areas of our lives. And if, if anyone would like to know a little bit more about what we're doing to help bring health, please feel free to engage with us uh, here on our page, Activate and Thrive. Uh, pop us a message or uh, put something in the YouTube uh, chat area or Instagram. We'd be happy to connect with you. So Ryan, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been such a pleasure. And friends, Thank you. friends, look for us each week on Thursdays at noon Eastern U.S. time for these Thriving Thursday chats. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. See you next Thank week. You. Thank you, Ryan. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care.